Over the last few months, I've taken you through the basics of world edit. Copy and paste, schematics, brushes, masks, plus lots more. And that's great, but what's it like when you bring it all together? In today's finale, we're making this awesome build and I'll talk you through how World Edit makes things like this possible by bringing all the things that we've done together, well, together. And now World Edit is available in the Minecraft 1.20 update. We are doing it in that. Let's go. This area will do. The backdrop's quite decent. We've got a forest there. We've got a frozen ocean there. We've got plenty of planes. I reckon we can do something with this. I'm pretty much gonna make this up as we go along, but hopefully it'll work out good in the end. I've armed myself with some tools, the standard wand and a load of brushes, and this one will be my smoothing tool and I'm going to try and include as many of the things that we've learned about as possible brushes masks cutting pasting distorting bringing in schematics all of that good stuff the playlist for this entire tutorial series is in the description below. So if you need to remind yourself of anything, or perhaps you've not watched them yet, what do you mean you've not watched them yet? You're an intelligent person, go and watch them now. Then jump down there, take a look at those, and then come back to this video to see it all come together. So the first thing I wanna do is create an area to build on. This is too low, the hills are gonna get in the way, so we need to raise this up a little bit. The first thing I did was to use a basic set command to give me a stone base to work from. And I then used a sphere brush made of air to trim it down a bit. I then used a masked stone sphere brush to build up that original cuboid I'd made with the set command. This gave me a more manageable, believable base that merged those two hills that I was working between. Because of gravity, sand and gravel are a great choice to start the smoothing process. I chose sand because of that colour contrast, it makes it easier to see. This allows the slopes to naturally form down towards the existing terrain, rather than having to correct lots of rocky spheres. I then went back and forth with the sand sphere brush and a combination of large and small cylinder sand brushes to make the slopes of the terrain as natural looking as I possibly could. It was then time for the painstaking job of smoothing. I used a smoothing tool to naturalise those sandy slopes a little more. This isn't too tricky because of the effect the small sand cylinder had but there were still a lot of very angular areas that I needed to flatten out to create the best effect. It's worth taking time at this stage, it's a lot harder to create a natural looking slope later after the detail has begun. Keep smoothing until you're happy with the look and feel of the structure. It's then really easy to use the replace command to switch out all of that sand and turn it to stone. Then add a little more sand using the small cylinder brush with lots more smoothing to change that to dirt. Repeat that and transform that into coarse dirt which gives some contrast and then one more time to add grass which will spread across some of that dirt to give a really natural feel. Replacing all that stone with a mixture of stone, cobble, andesite and stone bricks gives a really great texture, I love that. Changing up that stony peak at the back also was necessary because it didn't quite fit. And then I just had to tidy up ready for the next stage. Now we've created a great base that we can work from, but let's face it, it is just a hill made out of stone and grass and stuff, right? With a really nice gradual pathway that we're gonna use for the entrance. But it's not a lot of use if we don't actually build something on it. So we need to create a structure. Pause the video down in the comments, write down what you think it is I'm gonna build. No cheating now, write it down and then come back. You got that comment in? Brilliant, let's do the next bit. And to start with, I'm gonna use wool. A lot of people ask me why these massive awesome builders like Jerocraft, Trixie Blocks, Blue Nerd, all of that lot, use wool to create their buildings first. And it's a great question because it kind of looks daft and doesn't make sense. However, it does make sense. If you use different colored walls like I have here, you can use the replace command later on to give your buildings a mixture of blocks with some fabulous gradients and detail without having to place each different block individually, which can take hours literally, especially with a large build. You can then transform all of those different colors into different mixtures or different palettes altogether if you like. This saves lots of time, plus it also allows you to visualize what you're doing far more easily before hitting people with the final awesome result. So first off, I created rectangles using the slash walls command and stack them up and down to create the effect that the walls are going down into the rocks. I use different colored wall so I can create the gradient change later like I showed you a moment ago. I also used other wall colors to connect the inner and outer walls together plus even more for the corner towers which I built using the slash h sill command 
around and stacking them up and down too. Copying the tower and rotating the clipboard 90 degrees each time allows me to paste all four towers of the castle in each corner without spoiling the walls. And then creating support struts in another wall color means that they can be given a different texture to everything else later on. Once copied and repeated across the long wall, I use the slash move command to centralize them and then use my small sand cylinder to make sure that they are all on the ground completely. It was then time to use simple copy paste commands to place the support struts around all three of the other walls. And then once it was done, to re-raise that central floor of the structure to the door level without losing the potential for dungeons or some other subterranean buildings. I turned the floor into a solid white wall layer for texturing later. It was then time to transform each color into its own block palette. I focused on the lower colors having strong mossy themes with the higher colors containing more flat block textures such as stone and andesite to give a final gradient from rough mossy stone bricks up to smooth upper walls. The castle's still looking really plain so we need to do something about that. I'm putting some crenellation onto the walls around that wooden walkway using stone stairs and the slash stack command which saves loads of time. Then using the slash seal command I create floors around the tower tops to allow for more crenellation and that can then get copied across each one. It was time to do some detailing and I thought if I put it on one tower, I can then place it around all four of them using the copy paste command. I placed in windows, decorated the edges to make them look ever so slightly more round and also at the top, I thought a flag would look good so we've got one of those as well. Once all four of those towers are copied across and I'll sort out the direction of those flags later, I thought we might build out that path that's coming out of the castle. So I used the brush technique that we did in one of the videos, created a path brush, made sure I masked it for the path blocks that are already there and took it down into the valley. I then started to build the maculations around the edges of the walls. That will be going around all four sides. The castle walls also need a little bit of decoration, so we're placing windows that match up with those on the towers across those, copying them all the way around. And then I thought the center just needs something. For the purpose of this demonstration, I thought we'll put a single keep inside the castle walls using the slash seal command and creating it out of walls so we can have a gradient later. I make two towers, a large one and a small one with a smaller one on top of the larger one to create a lookout for it to pass across the entirety of the landscape. All that's left to do is bring in some schematics that I prepared earlier, which can be found for free in my details video that I released recently. The link will be in the description. I'm pasting in rocky outcrops, bushes, trees, and then with a sphere brush of a small percentage of flowers masked above the grass, I'm placing in some color. I'm also putting in some other bushes using oak leaves because it's always a good idea to add a few elements manually. Inside the castle, I've placed some market stalls and then I'll finish up with a very few lit fence posts, add a final touch of bone mill to give it a drop of life. And then we're done. So using World Edit, we transformed our world from this dull looking landscape into something really detailed and beautiful. Beautiful. That's a small example of what you can achieve with the basic commands from the World Edit plugin. Obviously, you can detail way more and create some incredible builds. I hope you really enjoy playing around with it. That's it for this video and this series. I've really enjoyed putting it together for you. I hope you've learned something new and I'll look forward to seeing you in another video. Bye.